when troubleshooting the PWM uh, EPD, a lot of times we'll get calls and a, a, a system may stop, it's not working anymore. When they turn this on, it'll basically say uh, it's not running or, or uh, solution tank dry, solution pump dry. Uh, it's not running correctly, it's just not kicking anything on. When they turn the system on, it just doesn't turn on. One of the first things you wanna check on the PWM controller is gonna be the LED. There's a, in our documentation, there's a list of LED sequences or flashes that happen when something's wrong with the controller. Um, a steady flash, off and on steady flash, continuous light just means uh, I gotta have voltage, I'm good to go, I'm ready to do whatever you need me to do. Um, if we're doing something else, like for example, if we're, even when the controller's off, it's gonna flash, it's gonna flash continuously. One of the other things we wanna check, of course, is our connections. We always wanna double check because what happens is a lot of times they'll run, customers will run these systems and they'll run them at 40 PSI, 50 PSI, and even though it'll do that, it'll start to overheat these electronics. And so one of the first things you wanna check would be the connections. Are they nice and clean? If you have any kind of arcing, and you'll see some black arcing on there, or if you see any kind of melting around this uh, connection on either end, you wanna check these as well. If you see any kind of arcing or melting, then you definitely know for sure that something that this has been overheating and you you have a bad connection which will cause this not to work or function correctly as well so when i pop this back in you'll see the led come back on but they're the most common led cycle is when this is flashing four pulses and then off four pulses and then off when you see that that typically means a voltage issue and that could be a bad connection it could be a low battery. It could be low voltage in the line. It could be that the, the power harness that goes all the way back to your battery is corroded somewhere. It has a bad connection somewhere, or it's too long. If you have any of this coiled up somewhere, that coiling will cause a problem. It will cause overheating through the, through the harness, and you'll get that. It, it, maybe throughout the day, in the morning, it'll take off, it'll run fine. And then all of a sudden it's just, everything goes off. And that's usually a sign of a voltage issue. And when you come back to the back and you're looking at the light, you'll probably see four flashes and then off. Four flashes and then off. So one of the first things you do is check your connections. Always check the connections. And no matter where it is, you may think, oh, I just, play, I just put that there, it's probably okay. You just wanna double check all your connections to make sure not only that they're clean, there's no arcing, when you push them together, if you pull on them, do you see any changes on it? You wanna make sure that that light is flashing steady. And then the next thing you wanna check is that you wanna see if it's the controller that's bad, or maybe it's a pump that's bad. And what, the best way to check that is take your harnesses here. This goes all the way back, the red and black goes all the way back to your battery. The white and black goes to the pumps. And then the smaller gauge wire, white and black, is for your, your PWM signal. So what you wanna do first thing is disconnect the, the power from the battery. See the light went off. Disconnect from the pump. And take this controller out of the picture. And so what you're basically gonna do is take the 12 volts from the battery and connect it directly to the pumps. That's gonna tell you right now if you're getting 12 volts directly to the pumps. In this case, you can see they're running. So we know the pumps are working. And then if once we know that the pumps were working, then we know we're getting voltage to this. Now, if you plug that in and nothing kicks on, you still could have a pump issue or you could have a bad connection or a blown fuse at the end over by the battery but this is a very good test to check to see at least if you're getting voltage here and it allows you to take this out of the scenario. Once you see that this is working or not, then we can therefore move ahead and, and uh, work on the problem that exists there. But if, th if that's working correctly, then we know it's gonna be somewhere in the PWM and, then, and the top two issues that you're gonna see if this is cut, cutting off while you're, work, while you're planting, 
and the system just cuts off, the top two issues that you're gonna see is a bad connection, so check every one of your connections. We see it a lot, they're melted, they're arced, and when you put it together in the morning, it'll run, it'll kick on, but as soon as it starts to heat up, the system starts to warm up. When you stop at the end of the row, you make your turn and you uh, turn your system back on as you move on, that surge of voltage hits that connector and, and basically comes loose arcs and then it shuts off throughout the day. So it won't happen maybe in the first couple of acres or, or a couple hours of running, but as it heats up and you make that turn, try to turn it back on and it, and it shuts off, you'll see that uh, voltage spike and then you'll see the four lights happen there. Once you see that, you know you gotta change or clean these connectors. And sometimes while you're in the field and you gotta run, one of the best things you could do is clean it and kind of bend the tab with a screwdriver a little bit, bend it up so that when it makes a connection, it's a real tight connection and that'll at least get you going until you can fix that. Uh, but check both sides, check the pump side, check to make sure the connections are clean, not melted uh, and so forth. But that's usually the problem there that you'll find is either a bad connection or a heated up connection or the PWM is going bad.